and it's fabulous. It's been great to be here. So I've been here, um, let's see, about two and a half years now. Um, and Amber, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, and then I can sort of kick off the more formal sure. welcome. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amber Lucero Dwyer and I'm the Director of Programming and Training here at Peace Corps Malawi. I was a volunteer in El Salvador about 10 years ago um, and I've been living in Africa now for about five years. So I spent the last four years in Rwanda um, where my husband worked for Peace Corps and um, we just came to Malawi about five months ago. Great, thanks. Um, so first of all, I want to just welcome you guys. Um, we're really, really, really excited to meet you, to welcome you to Malawi. Um, it's an amazing place. Um, it is a place that will challenge you in ways that you never imagined and I think reward you in ways you never imagined as well. Um, I'm sure you've done some reading. It is called the warm heart of Africa for a reason um, and people really do embrace you and um, you know, sort of take you in as family, and it's it's really um, exciting to be a part of. And I think you know, every day it, it forces you to to sort of reconsider sort of your approach to the world. You know, as you as you see how people struggle here and how um, they're really able to to muster a smile um, and a big hello to greet every day, despite um, really tough conditions. Um, the, the 2016 Human Development Index just came out, um, and Malawi, I believe, was ranked 170th out of 188 countries. Um, it is one of the poorest countries in the world, um, and it's really been a rough couple of years for Malawi. Um, the first year that I was here, there was, were some of the worst floods in decades, um, followed by drought, and, you know, that... Um, impacted crops and it's a country that is really 85 percent subsistence agriculture so that means most people are you know really relying on you know what they plant um, themselves um, to get them through the year so there's one harvest um, and if that's if that harvest doesn't succeed um, you know then it's then it's a rough period so um, two years ago it was the the floods followed by drought and that dropped production by about 30 percent and then last year there was massive drought um, all across southern Africa. Um, so this last year, about 40% of the population, so 6 million people out of about 16 million, um, required food assistance. Um, and that was, you know, that was a real challenge um, for for everybody. And you know, it really affected the volunteers. I think when you hear those big numbers, um, you know, they. They sound like big numbers, um, but when it's the family that lives next door to you that's run out of food, it's a very different um, situation. Um, this year's um, rains have been much better and the harvest has, has been better, um, but it'll take a couple of years for Malawi to recover. Um, so I think it's important to know that you're coming at a time of great need and um, you know there's a lot of really important work to do. Um, it's very, very difficult work to do. Um, you know, particularly when you have people um, who who have just gone through such a such a devastating period um, in their lives. Um, let's see, where else where else can I take you? Um, the U.S. government is one of the the largest donors to Malawi, um, uh, and there are lots and lots of NGOs um, who are who are present here. Um, you know, and they're working across a, a variety of sectors. Um, but the good news is, is that Malawi is getting a lot of help. Um, the bad news is that um, that can create a culture of um, handouts and, and expectations um, that, that people will get handouts from NGOs. And I think it makes Peace Corps work that much more important, which is, um, you know, we are here to build capacity, um, you know, using locally available resources and really empowering people um, to, um, you know, take charge of, of their own lives and improve their own lives, um, but it can be very challenging um, for volunteers if there are a lot of NGOs in their communities. Um, I think I mentioned the U.S. government is, is one of the largest donors. A big um, piece of that is PEPFAR, which is the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. Um, the U.S. government provides over $100 million a year to fight HIV. Um, we've had some really exciting news and progress um, on that front. Uh, there was a big study that just came out, and um, Malawi's doing remarkably well. Um, you know, I think which is just a testament to 
you know, what can be done when people are really focused and really working towards a common goal. Um, there are global goals to fight HIV um, where they're looking to have 90% of the people know their status, 90% of those be on treatment, and 90% of those have viral load suppression. Um, and Malawi is, I think, about 73% of the people know their status, and that is where there's a lot of energy being placed right now. Um, but of those that know their status, more than 90% are on treatment, and of those, more than 90% are virally suppressed. So that is really exciting news, um, you know, for Malawi. And you know, you all will play an important role in helping get the rest of those people to a place where they know their status um, and are on treatment. And I think that's really going to be historic um, for all of us um, to, to get to the place where we have epidemic control in Malawi. Um, a big part of epidemic control is um, related to gender and getting adolescent girls and young women um, onto treatment. So that is also a place where Peace Corps plays a major role. Um, you know, teachers will have tremendous access to those young um, women and girls, and you know, folks in the health sector and environment will be working with them as well. It's a big target group for us, um, and there's lots of work to do there. Um, I think I'll stop there in terms of programmatic stuff and let you guys ask questions uh, later. Um, but I just I think in terms of Malawi as a country, it is very very poor. It's also very friendly. It's very peaceful. It's small, so it's a place where you know there's opportunity for um, people to innovate um, and and try new things. And I'm just really excited, um, you know, for you all to you know to be here and to be able to play a part in Malawi's development. Um, I'll go a little bit into expectations, and then I'll turn it over to Amber. Um, in terms of coming into Malawi um, and and coming into Peace Corps, I think you all you may have um, volunteered before, um, you know, as, as something that's on the side. Maybe you've you volunteered in a more serious, um, you know, capacity. But I really want to emphasize that when you join Peace Corps, um, you are very visible member of the community and you're coming at the invitation of the government. Um, so it is a job. Um, you know, it's a job where people have expectations that you'll, you know, contribute in specific ways that we've told the government that we would contribute. And it's really 24-7. Um, you will be very visible um, members of the community. Um, you'll be a little bit in a fishbowl. Um, and you know there are really good things about that. People will notice you, um, you know. But sometimes it's you know we like to be anonymous, and you know it's hard to be in that fishbowl all the time, um, you know. But I think we all are are in it together. Um, Amber and I joke we're at a fishbowl as well here in in a long way as members of the of the U.S. government community, and um, you know they're they're just. Um, you know, a lot of responsibilities that come with that um, as a representative of the United States government and as a representative of Peace Corps. Um, so we really do, um, you know, look forward to you all coming in as professional, you know, volunteers and, and ready to sort of carry that, that torch. Um, we have said that we want to be the sort of JFK volunteers. Um, you know, and really carry forward that spirit of, of service as we as we come in. Um, because it's small, uh, we also know each other very well. So we, you know, like to think of Peace Corps Malawi as a family. Um, you will have a very, very intense experience. You'll have a lot being thrown at you, um, you know, but through that intensity um, and with the support of the office, you really do bond with people in ways that, um, you know, you, you probably won't at any other time in your life. Um, we just have a group that's closing their service this week, and um, it's been really fun to watch them learn and grow and, um, you know, see how they've come together as a group and come together to, to support each other. Um, we do um, expect that, you know, your primary responsibility will be to your community. Um, and that you really spend time in your community. Those relationships are, are incredibly important. And, um, you know, I hear that time and again as, as volunteers close their service about how valuable those 
relationships are and what a unique experience it is to, to spend time um, in a village really getting to know and understand the people that are around them. Um, you know, sort of in that spirit, we do ask all volunteers to respect the norms um, of the community that they're serving in. Um, one of those that, um, you know, has is, is probably been in some of your welcome materials uh, relates to alcohol. And, um, you know, alcohol in a village in Malawi um, has a much different connotation that it, that it would in the United States, um, particularly for women. Um, which isn't necessarily fair, but it just is. Um, women in a village setting, you know, really don't drink at all. And, um, you know, even for men, there's sort of, you know, if, if, you, have, if you have one drink, you're, you're sort of considered a drunk. Um, you know, there's sort of no, no sort of concept of social drinking. People either, um, you know, drink and are troublemakers or, you know, they don't drink and they're, they're good people. Um, so your pre-service training will be dry. So that is the first... 12 weeks of your, your time in country. Um, so I want to make sure that you all understand that um, coming in so that you know what those expectations are. After folks swear in, um, like you're all adults, and we ask that you, you know, drink responsibly. I would say most volunteers don't drink at all in their village for the reasons that, that I just stated, um, you know, but when they get together, you know, in the city and, um, you know, for vacation, they'll, they'll have a social drink. Um, but that's something that, you know, we've um, given a lot of thought to and, and we think is very, very important. So just want to make sure that we set that expectation for you. Um, let's see, other than that, I think I will, I will stop there. Um, I think there'll be a series of calls coming up and you'll have an opportunity to talk with, with different members of staff. Um, I think you'll find our staff incredibly um, competent and caring and, um, interested and engaged, it's a great team, um, you know, and we will support you every every step of the way. So over to you, Amber. I think you need to unmute. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Uh, so I want to give you a little bit of, uh, paint a little bit of a picture for you of your first three months, which will be uh, pre-service training. And here uh, we often call it PST. So if you see the word, if you see the letters PST in your materials or if you hear it, we're just talking about pre-service training. And that is the period of time in which uh, you will be trained as an entire group before you go out to the village where you will serve for the, for the two years of your service. So it's the first 12 weeks. Um, your PST will take place in a rural village, as Carol had mentioned. Um, it's about an hour or so uh, outside of uh, Lilongwe, the capital. And I would just want to give you a basic overview of that time. Um, first of all, a very important part of your PST is what we call the homestay experience. And that means that you will, uh, each of you will be lodged with a host family that lives in the village um, that will also be the training village that you'll, you'll learn everything ab uh, about Peace Koran. So you'll, you'll be another member of your host family's uh, household. Um, they will have a room for you, but you will eat your meals with this family. You will learn language from this family. Um, you will learn and cultural um, attitudes from this family, and you'll also learn how to conduct certain basic chores um, that you will need to learn um, to live in a village, because most of you will be living without electricity, without indoor plumbing, um, and so there, uh, we want to be able to teach you how to cook without a stove. Um, how to gather your water and how to clean your clothes without a washing machine. All of those things um, are very important skills that your host family will, uh, will help introduce you to. Your host family will likely not speak English, or maybe there's one or two people in the family that will speak some English. Um, and so this is your chance to really um, grab hold of the language, to practice it. Um, so it, it, it's a very important uh, part of your training. It's not just a, a lodging experience, but a very important part of your training to become a Peace Corps volunteer. 
um, your family will um, will treat you like another uh, another family member. A lot of volunteers um, get very close to their families because they are your window into uh, into Malawi uh, for the first time, and so they they will play a very special role in your service. Um, and I'm looking forward to you developing uh, those relationships with your host families. Um, in terms of the content of your PST, let me just break it down into about four major categories. Um, one is what we call program or technical training, and that is um, that is training that is specific to the uh, assignment that you have. So if you're an education volunteer, you'll be learning about teaching methodologies, you'll be learning about writing lesson plans according to the Malawian curriculum, you'll be learning about gender equitable practices in the classroom, so you'll be learning how to teach in the classroom in a Malawian school, and also how to work with community groups um, and teacher training as well. So if you're a health volunteer, you'll be learning about working in a health center, you'll be learning about HIV, um, AIDS prevention activities, you'll be learning about maternal and child health and nutrition as well, um, and health system strengthening. So again, the technical aspects of what it means to be a health volunteer in a village. And then, of course, our environment volunteers, you'll be learning about deforestation, you'll be learning about um, building cook stoves, you'll be learning about uh, building tree nurseries, planting permagardens, um, and helping, helping your communities um, increase their food security and also their nutrition as well. So, so that's what we call kind of programming or technical training. It's very specific to the sector in which you're working. We also, um, a large component of uh, PST is also language, which I mentioned before. And so each of you will be assigned a specific language um, that is spoken here in Malawi. And the language that you're assigned will be based on the region that you will be going to in Malawi um, for your two years of service. There's several languages spoken here in Malawi. The dominant ones are Chichewa, or the dominant one is Chichewa. So if some of you are w wondering what kind of advanced work that you can do, um, and some of you already want to get a start on language, not all of you will be trained in Chichewa, but, um, but no matter what language you end up learning, getting a basic handle of Chichewa is always advisable, So uh, because that's the language you'll be using in the capital when you pass through. So if you want to get a head start on some language, learning some basic Chichewa is is great, and we'll teach you that here in Malawi. Uh, but for language, you'll be spending the first two hours of each day with a language tutor, and uh, your language tutor is a Mala is Malawian who speaks that local language. And you'll be um, you'll be working with other a small group of other trainees um, to learn that language together. And so. Um, You'll be learning the language. You'll also be applying the language as well. Uh, and, but I want to I want to emphasize that language learning uh, we will get you on a good head start during PST. But it's something that you should be prepared to continue throughout the rest of your service. Um, I don't know if, if any of you have ever learned a language before, but you do uh, um, you do you will recognize that it is a, an immersive process and it's an ongoing process. So even when you get to your sites, you'll want to be you'll want to continue to be an active of language learner so that you can continually improve your language skills. Um, many people in Malawi speak English and a lot of times that can be a problem in learning the local language because sometimes you'll, you'll just start naturally going to the people that speak English because it's easier. I want to encourage you off from, from the start to, uh, to commit to, lear to learning the local languages because that will open up the number of people in your villages that you can work with and you won't find yourself just going to the people who speak uh, speak English and so it will broaden your the opportunities that you have for for uh, conducting your work another big area of um, of emphasis in our PST is related to language and that's culture and so uh, it's very important that um, that volunteers come into Malawi ready to adapt to the cultural norms in Malawi um, and so we will help to guide you through that uh, and what is uh, what is normal what is acceptable what how to dress we'll send you some information about that before you get here um, also just helping to understand what are some of the the important aspects of life in Malawi um, it, um, attitudes of respect and how uh, the traditional authorities uh, work in Malawi from chiefs in the village, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So don't feel overwhelmed about that yet. Again, cultural knowledge is something that is an iterative process. You'll continue to learn it the more you are in Malawi. Um, and so, but we'll get you, uh, 
during your PST, you'll get the fundamentals on Malawian culture. And then also um, some practical areas uh, that we will help um, uh, train you on during your PST is basically based around how to stay safe in Malawi. So that comes under two categories, medical and safety. So medical, we have two, uh, we have two medical staff here in Malawi that will train you on some basic practices to help keep you uh, safe from certain illnesses or, uh, or food, food or water contamination at your sites and also help you understand how to treat, um, how to recognize uh, symptoms that might cause concern. And of course, they will be on call the entire time, but as we all know, prevention is the best cure. So uh, we want to make sure that you are well, well versed um, in how to prevent uh, medical issues from happening. And then also safety and security. Um, it's always important whenever you are in another country that you understand ways to keep yourself safe and out of um, risky situations. Malawi in general is a, uh, a politically stable country. Country, but there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of crime uh, and petty theft, petty theft and opportunistic crime that happens, and so we have a safety and security manager. We'll take you through a number of um, a number of training sessions that just deals with how to keep yourself safe uh, while you're in Malawi. And mo again, most of that is preventative measures, um, just knowing uh, when to travel, when not to travel, where to travel, where not to travel, etc. Um, just a couple other points I want to mention is um, one that our, we endeavor to make our PST as hands-on as possible. Um, you will find yourself in several sessions where you are sitting down, but where it is possible to have hands-on experience, we, um, we do that. Um, so we, uh, we hope that you will um, take full advantage of that, uh, of that experience. And at the end of your PST, you'll have a practicum. A practicum. So you will be um, teaching back some of the information that you have learned, practicing some of the language, practicing some of the skills that you have developed um, so that you go into your site ready. And also during the PST, I know this is a question that pops up a lot, you will, um, you will get notification of the site that you will spend your next two years in during that time, and you will have a chance to visit that site as well during, during your PST. So, um, so that's an exciting time for everyone uh, where they get to learn where their site is and actually get to go visit it. Um, but for right now, I think that's a pretty broad overview of our PST. Um, I think in general, uh, volunteers always uh, look back on their PSTs with uh, a certain mix of emotions because it is a very intense time. You're learning a lot of new information um, over a long period of time, and uh, and it's also a time where almost every hour of your day is programmed. Um, so. It will be a little bit tough at first, but then what people usually say is each day is long, but then when you think back on it, it felt so short. Uh, so keep that in mind if you feel a little, if you're feeling a little anxious about it. A lot of people don't even remember their PST, meaning the length of it, uh, but they certainly remember the skills that they picked up in that PST as uh, being beneficial for uh, implementation during their service and their site. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, and I'll be happy to take any uh, questions. I see we have one question. Can you repeat the name of the training village? Um, someone else, a couple seconds. So, uh, so the training area that we're going to be in is Kasungu, and then we use small villages within Kasungu as our training sites. So, so there will actually be three villages that all the volunteers will be living in, and then we have training centers within those villages that you'll be able to walk to. Um, another question is, what are some examples of culturally appropriate business casual female clothing for training? Um, so th I think the main, uh, the main message for, female, for women is that uh, skirts are the norm. Um, in, in Malawi, and the below the knee skirts are, are the, the primary length. Um, so you don't see a lot of women, even in the capital, wearing slacks. Uh, most women wear long skirts. No, oh, we have a couple questions here. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about bringing a keyboard for my tablet rather than a full-size laptop, as long as it has MS Word and Excel, should I be fine? I think that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, what is your advice for packing? Um, let me think. Uh, and Carol, Carol and Naj, feel free to jump in on advice on packing. Um, but I, I think my advice on packing is uh, don't 
treat it like a vacation um, and don't treat it like camping. Um, I've seen a lot of cases where volunteers bring big tents and sleeping bags and you may use those um, once or twice during your service, but really you should be thinking about the day-to-day -day. Um, and the day-to-day -day is going to be largely um, business casual wear um, that you're going to be wearing in your site. Env environment volunteers are a bit different because they're working out in the fields a lot, so their clothing is going to be a little bit different, but think about your day-to-day -day activities which are going to be in a in a more professional setting. Uh, Carol, do yeah, you have I'll anything to add? That. Yeah, I'll jump yeah. on that a little bit. Um, in terms of clothing for women, um, wearing slacks was actually illegal for a long time here. Um, you know, so it, it's not just that women don't wear slacks, it's, it's that it is, you know, it, it, it's that it was illegal. And so, you know, most people, well, most women in a village wear what's called a chitenje. It's just a, a piece of fabric and, you know, you wrap it around your waist and tie it. And, um, you know, it's very simple and easy. We will give you one of those as part of your sort of welcome, um, you know, I won't call it a basket, a little bag with some, some basic supplies in it. Um, you can get those here for a couple of dollars. Um, so it's, it's very inexpensive. And, you know, wear that with a t-shirt. Um, you know, and, or, you know, some other slightly nicer top, um, a few maxi skirts, you know, would be fine. Um, a lot of women will wear, um, you know, sort of running tights or something underneath those because you're getting on and off bicycles. Um, but really less is more, you know, and I, I think there was a, a question, will you be able to get that kind of clothing in country? Absolutely. Um, and there are also tons of secondhand clothing um, markets um, that you know you can you can get things um, in. So I think most volunteers feel like they brought too many clothes um, and that they didn't need everything that they brought. Um, comfortable walking shoes for sure. Um, you know, you will be on your bicycles a lot. You will be walking a lot. Um, you know, in the villages. So you know, comfortable, practical shoes will be important. Um, Let's see, I think there was another question about how big is our class. There are three sectors that are coming um, as part of the, the training cohort, um, health, education, and environment, and we're expecting about 70. Um, it is the largest class that we've brought in together. It used to be that health and environment came separately from education, so this will be our first combined class. Um, we're really looking forward to that because we think there are important synergies between the sectors. Um, and you know, we, we look forward to how we cross-fertilize um, across sectors and, and how we can really leverage the training to, to take a more holistic approach to the needs of, of our different communities. There's a, Nash, there's a question about staging. Do you want to take that? Do we meet somewhere in the States or before heading the PST? Are our flights already figured out? Yes. Yeah, so you all will be staging in Philadelphia. Um, you will receive all of that information 30 days days in advance um, to departure. Um, and that, it will give you an instructions on how to call SATO, book your flight from your home of record to Philadelphia. And then within that email, you'll have um, your itinerary in terms of how you're going to get to Malawi. Um, and so just kind of hang tight with that. You will receive that information shortly. Is that it? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's a question about what's an appropriate homestay host gift. Um, I may refer that one to our volunteers, um, and I think there are some who are responding to messages on Facebook. Um, I, I would say that, you know, if you want to bring something for your host family, that's great. Um, anything that you would bring should be modest, um, and, you know, you always want to think about um, what kind of precedent you're setting. and um, you know, how is that with respect to the other volunteers? Um, Malawi is a very communal society, um, and people do compare, uh, you know, so we would want to keep it, you know, whatever it is, a calendar, maybe, um, you know, a small bag of chocolates, you know, something, something sort of in that realm um, would be very much appreciated and, and would be appropriate, but the, the volunteers um, themselves might have some other interesting ideas um, on that front. Great. 
Uh, is it okay to wear uh, open-toed sandals or chacos to the classroom as an education volunteer? Um, I we just went over the um, or we were just reviewing the the dress uh, the dress recommendations that the volunteers put together. I believe they said no. Um, let me check that. Uh, but I I want to ask if um, if that can be posted on Facebook as well. Uh, because I think it would be better, you get a better answer from the volunteers who are uh, especially in the classroom every day. But from what I have heard, it is a very professional environment in the in the education uh, classroom. So I would ver I would get, I would steer on the side of um, of closed-toed shoes and more professional wear. And I would like to add that during your uh, one of our second conference calls with your supervisor, there will be a volunteer on the call that can kind of dig a little deeper into what exactly you're supposed to wear, especially as an education volunteer. So you will have an op opportunity to like kind of meet, see a volunteer um, kind of face to face, I guess, through Skype um, and ask those kind of questions. Yeah, I will say that that you know, despite, again, despite the poverty and, you know, maybe people only have a few outfits, um, they wear them with pride, they are clean, they are professionally, you know, sort of dressed and, and sort of out in their best. So, you know, in an education sort of environment, um, you know, you would definitely want to, you know, be sort of in a more business casual you know, kind of, um, kind of dress. So, you know, it does project a lot and, um, and it's very important in the society here. Let's see, there's a question about email confirmation. Naj, maybe you can take that one. Yes. So unfortunately, we cannot give you um, like a, a letter that says that you will be serving um, for the next two years until you come to stage and you sign in as a trainee. Um, but however, you can use your invitation email um, that you received that you've been invited to the Malawi program. Um, most companies do just accept that. If you're having a hard time, um, in most cases, they do accept that email, um, but unfortunately, we can't give you an official document saying that you are going to be serving until you actually attend staging and sign in as a trainee. Okay. Um, there's a question about taxes. Um, you will get a W-2 from... Peace Corps, um, you know, for the the small percentage of your, I believe it's your living allowance um, that is provided. Um, so we will get those documents to you, and if you have other forms, you know, and things, they can be mailed here. Um, but you know, typically people do go into the the cities to access, um, you know, an internet cafe, um, and you know, they would need to do their taxes there. Um, Let's see. There's a question about, um, oh, go ahead, Amber. Oh, no, I just saw the spirit stove. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what that is, but let me um, let me just say in general, I think uh, you will you will be taught how to use a traditional stove that um, is used by other people in your communities, and I would recommend that um, that you adopt the practices of, of your community. So you're already going to be bringing things that make you stand out, such as a smartphone and a laptop. So the more that you can use um, the the same practices of cooking, of cleaning, of gathering water that your um, that your village is using, I think that is a better way to integrate um, to minimize those differences where you can. Um, as far as bed sheets, um, I believe we provide those um, in our welcome kit, but let me let me get back to you on that um, just to confirm. We do. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, there's a question about bringing a keyboard for your tablet rather than a full-size laptop. Again, I would probably direct that question to to one of the, the volunteers, um, you know, to see how that has, has worked for them. Um, but it is important to have Word and Excel, and there are some other programs that we ask you to access um, if you can with a with a laptop. Yeah, and um, let me um, take. Oh. Go ahead, Nash. Just to add to that, I know the VRF, which is your um, volunteer reporting. Um, Form, what's the F stand for? Yes. Um, <laughs> form. Um, that's the reporting tool that you all will be using to um, kind of notify your supervisor of the projects you'll be, you'll be doing. And I know in most cases it does not actually operate on a tablet. You will need a laptop for that. The software is not yeah. compatible. Yeah. Let me um, let me take the question about uh, loc placement locations, and maybe Carol, you can take the question about uh, volunteers uh, affected by crime. 
Um, so the, the question is, from my understanding, communities apply for Peace Corps volunteers and therefore placement locations are predetermined. Would it be possible to get the names of these locations so volunteers can do preliminary research on that region? Um, so the first part definitely is true. Uh, we, only go into, uh, we only go into countries and also into communities that request Peace Corps volunteers because that's an important part of community acceptance. Um, however, the, the list of communities that we are working with for the next year is still um, still being determined. Our uh, our staff are visiting many communities around the country as we speak, and will and will be doing so uh, for the next several months. So we do not have a complete list. Um, that you will find out the communities when uh, when you get to PST as we um, as we determine um, which volunteer goes to which of those communities. That that determination of which volunteer goes to which community is a uh, is a uh, complex process, but it is partly based on on the resume that you send, your aspiration statement, what strengths you have, um, what interests you have, and also we'll be sending out a questionnaire very soon to help us get a little bit more information uh, about your skill sets um, so that we can help determine placement as well. And then we look on the other side of the, the community's needs, uh, expressed needs that they have stated as well. So it is, um, it is a, a process that will, um, that will be finalized after we get to meet you in person and, and get to know a little bit more about you. Okay. Um, the question about crime, what percentage of Peace Corps volunteers have been affected by crime? I don't have that statistic right in front of me. Um, what I can say is most of the crime that volunteers do experience is, you know, theft and burglary. Um, they're crimes of opportunity, so typically if they're traveling, maybe they left, you know, a window open, you know, or maybe somebody knew they were gone and, and broke their window open and, and hooked some things out of their house. Um, you know, or they're pickpocketed on a bus, you know, it's, it's those types of things that are the most frequent um, types of crime in Malawi. Um, we don't have a lot of violent crime here. Um, like I said, it is a very peaceful country, but it is a very poor country, you know, so where, where there's opportunity, um, you know, some people will, will take it. Um, that, those crime statistics, I believe, are available um, and, you know, Naj, you and I can work on that if, if you all have follow-up questions and, and want to know more. Okay, there's a question about um, projects that combine all the volunteers to work together. Um, and there was another question about, um, I think, how often volunteers from different sectors work together. Um, Amber, you want to take that one? Sure. Sure. So uh, I think everyone's kind of getting the the idea or understanding the idea that each volunteer works in a specific sector, in, and that's either education, environment, or health. Um, but there are opportunities um, to work uh, collaboratively. Uh, you will be. We're working on a, a what's called a cluster placement strategy, meaning that we will. Certainly it won't be this way for every volunteer, but there will be some regions where volunteers from different sectors are placed within, not next to each other, but within a close enough proximity that they can do some cross, um, some collaborative work um, together uh, and help meet the needs of each other's communities that doesn't fit their particular sector or draw upon the sectoral expertise of another volunteer that is nearby. So there will, there will be those opportunities for you. Okay. Um, there's a question here about where we'll be able to keep important documents. Um, we do keep a small safe in the Peace Corps headquarters office, um, you know, where you can keep, you know, the passport, driver's license, credit cards, hard currency, um, those types of things. And we do provide a lockbox um, for valuables at your site, um, you know, so that you can keep those things locked up and out of sight and safe. Um, Let's see. Okay, so it's, I think there's a question about what you have shipped here and what you bring with you. Um, I will say, you know, you should be able to, to fit anything that you need um, in the two suitcases that you bring. Um, like I said, less is more. Um, so there's a question about solar panels. Most of those are, are small sort of solar packs, so I wouldn't imagine that that's a, that that's a larger um, thing that wouldn't fit in bags. Um, if there was something that you wanted to mail, is it safe and reliable? I haven't heard 
a lot of stories about packages getting lost. Um, they do take a very long time to get here. Um, and, you know, I think three, four weeks, if not more. Um, I've heard a couple of months at times um, for packages to arrive. Um, you know, so if there's something that you, you know, feel like you absolutely need but won't be able to fit it in your suitcase, then I would suggest that you, you send it in advance. Um, you know, but, but like I said, I, I wouldn't expect that there would be too much that you couldn't fit in those two bags. Let me take on the question, what is the school year like in Malawi? What, what, what do education volunteers do when school is not in session? So the school year is, um, it runs through, uh, or if, sorry, it ends in July, um, and there's, of course, um, some breaks. So it's not too far different from a, or, uh, an American school year, except that the, the seasons are different here. Um, so you should expect that. Um, I will say that the class size is uh, much larger. Um, some volunteers teach to very large class sizes, which, as you can imagine, can be a challenge. And you'll learn some, you'll have to learn some uh, in pretty incredible um, classroom management techniques um, to deal with the class sizes that big but that will give you an um, that will give you an insight into some of the challenges that uh, Malawi faces in terms of uh, lack of resources um, another question what do ed volunteers do when school is not in session so that is um, when school is not in session that is a time when a lot of education volunteers do uh, secondary activities um, so they might run camps um, for because the the students are out of session so we might do a girl camp or we might do a soccer camp. There's lots of opportunities for extracurricular activities. Um, it's also a time where a lot of education volunteers t use their vacation because they don't want to uh, leave school in the middle of the term. Um, so they'll um, use that time to do vacation as well. So um, there's plenty of activities to engage students um, or to do some community engagement as well um, or to work in other areas outside of your sector um, to, uh, during those breaks. Okay, there's a question about how is communication back to home in Malawi. Um, every site, you know, should have internet access or, or sort of, you know, sorry, some cell phone access um, at some place in their village. So you might need to stand next to the right tree facing a certain way and, and holding it up to, to be able to get a signal. Um, but we do want you to be reachable and, and to be able to have that access. So um, WhatsApp is the most common form of communication amongst volunteers, and um, most volunteers do use that to, to be in contact with home as well. Um, you know, people have used FaceTime and Skype and all kinds of things. I think they're able to, to be in, you know, somewhat regular contact. Um, you know, with their families back home. Um, so I, I haven't heard that that's, you know, been an issue. Like I said, it's a, it's a challenge in some sites. It's a challenge some days more than others. Um, you know, I, I think one thing that, that you will learn in, in Malawi is flexibility and resilience, um, you know, because what may be true one day might not be true the next, um, you know, but the, the communications has, has been fairly, um, you know, consistent. Another question, uh, does Peace Corps coordinate projects with British VSO and Japanese JICA efforts in Malawi? Um, certainly all of the volunteer sending agencies, uh, we uh, coordinate together. In, in a lot of times that is to make sure that we're not duplicating each other's efforts, but when there are opportunities for us to work together, we will make plans to do so. Um, right now with both VSO and JICA, we do not have current uh, projects that we are collaborating with, but you may find yourself in a village that has a uh, VSO volunteer or a JICA volunteer. During my service, I had a VSO volunteer in my uh, in my site, and I collaborated with him on a couple of different projects. I know plenty of volunteers that have served in the same village with with JICA volunteers, and there was opportunity for collaboration there. So, so Naj, can you take that question about the, the downloadable file and country information and forms? Yeah. Um, so So are you are you asking about the visa? Because that should have been already completed a while ago. Um, and I've actually received uh, information from our SATO office that you already complete that all of you have actually completed um, your passport and your visa applications. So I don't know. I 
are you coming from if you're coming from a different program you will have access to a new okay our placement officer is just telling me that you were just invited to Malawi and you're coming from the Prude class. Okay, um, I can actually um, contact you one-on-one -on -one and I'll take you through, through that whole process in terms of getting, making sure you get your visa and your um, uh, passport uh, situated for Malawi. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> ah, all right. So, it doesn't look like there are other questions coming through, but um, I really do encourage you all. I'm sure you're looking up all kinds of, of information, and you know there have been book recommendations and, and other kinds of things. Um, the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is a great book, a really nice read, um, written um, by a boy who grew up in a village during a time of famine and, and had to drop out of school and ended up teaching himself some physics and, and built a windmill and um, you know was able to start charging phones and, and doing some other things. And it gives a really great um, glimpse of village life and some of the um, you know things that people go through and some of the attitudes and some of the cultural norms. Um, so again, really nice read if you have a chance to chance to take a look at that. Let's see. There's a question, is it okay to order a few things and have them sent to Peace Corps headquarters ahead of us? Um, I'm not sure if that question is to Peace Corps headquarters like in Washington. Oh, oh in Malawi. Malawi. Yeah. Um, so typically what we would do is collect packages. There, there are fees associated with those sometimes, um, you know, so like I said, I think, I think if there are a few things that, that you want to send, um, you know, you can certainly go ahead and do that, um, but I would keep it, um, you know, keep it modest. Um, and then we would, you know, if we had to pick those up, we would ask to be reimbursed, um, you know, when you, when you arrive. Hey, uh, excuse me, Carol, there's, if things need to be, if there's a duty associated with the, with the package, so if you have to pay customs fees, most likely the, Post office will ask, will open up the package for inspection, and they need the person who the package is addressed to to be there. Uh, so if you're sending us things now, uh, we will not be able to pick that up, and that will stay at the airport uh, for a few for a few months. And if the package is at the airport, sorry, not the airport, at the post office for more than three months, they'll send it back. And that's why Adam gets paid the big bucks. So Adam is our adding guy <laughs> and keeps us all in line. Thank you, Adam, for that. Do we have any more questions? No, well, listen, like we are... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Carol. I was going to say, we're... <laughs> We're really, really, again, it's very excited to, to welcome you. Um, we're a little bit biased, but we think you got the best assignment. Um, I'm sorry for Peru, but we're very happy to have you. You're going to be very happy in Malawi. Um, and, um, you know, it'll be an amazing experience. And I think just come with a very open mind and open heart. And, um, you know, it, it will um, it will change your world. And, you know, it's... it's um, truly one of the toughest jobs you'll ever love and um, you know it's a great sort of organization to be a part of a great you know club to be a part of and you know I, I think um, I am just really excited for you and, and look forward to, to sharing those next two years with you all okay. great so if we don't have any more questions then um we can end there and uh, just look out for some additional emails that I'll be sending you um, about uh, just some additional action items that you need to complete before you leave. Um, I will be sending out a uh, questionnaire that um, the staff in Malawi have provided for me for you all to fill out. So just kind of look out for that. Um, stay active on the Facebook group. I love interacting um, with you all on there, um, asking those really great questions and, and also plugging into the volunteers that are on the ground that can really kind of give you a good idea of what it's like um, to serve. So again, thank you so much. And I really look forward to seeing you all in um, June. Um, but I hope you have a great weekend.
Thank you. Sorry, Naj, let me put in one. Yeah. Hang on, Naj, let me put in one more plug. Um, uh -huh. If you're not if you're not already connected on our official Facebook page, um, please do go there. Um, particularly today, because we've got a group of our our COSing volunteers, volunteers who have finished their service, are are closing out today, and there are just some great like, you know, words of wisdom and you know farewell photos there. So it's it's kind of a nice little way to connect with those folks who are heading out. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so All much, right. uh, Carol and Amber and Adam. I uh, really appreciate it joining the call. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone. And um, just we'll be in touch. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.